Welcome back, everyone. My name is Eltamar, and we're going to be continuing our Let's Play of our good campaign of Wrath of the Righteous. Where we left the last time, we just rested in, uh, or we were about to rest in this underground area. Actually, uh, there is a conversation path that takes place immediately after we rest, so I didn't want you guys to miss that out. This is kind of an important one, or at least it's relatively important. I like that. So we'll let everyone get back up. Eight hours of rest. We failed to weaken. What is the DC on this thing? We rolled a 15 plus 16. DC is 32. So actually, DC 32 is really high. Anyways, Arushale looks upset. It seems that she has been plagued by dark thoughts since leaving Winter Sun. That mortal, Maravok. I just can't stop thinking about what happened to him and his whole village. It was a real tragedy. Yes, it was. Demons break the minds of mortals so easily, no matter how wise or noble these mortals are. A whole village living in a world of illusion for a century. You know, ever since we left, I keep thinking, what if the same thing is happening to me right now? What if I just think I've joined the crusade and I'm fighting against demons? It's just that, what I'm doing here, it all seems so unreal. You're so right. Remember how you told me Desna once kept you trapped in a world of dreams? What if she never let you out of there? Arushalay stares at you stunned. So where does that leave me then? If it's true, then all my attempts to redeem myself and the crusade and even you, all of it's just an illusion sent to me by Desna. Everything around me is fake, and in reality I'm still her captive. What a horrible thought. Desna would never do that to me. Or or would she? No, no, she would never do that. A wink at Arushale. Let's go to my tent. I'll present you with undeniable proof that I'm real. Don't ever joke like that, please. Don't ever tell me that anything again. What if I were unable to resist? You could die. And I'd have to go right back to the abyss. Right, sure. In reality, you're just a little butterfly that fell asleep on the page of an encyclopedia one uh, summer afternoon, and the whole crusade is just your dream. Arushale frowns. Don't laugh at me, I'm serious. This... huh. If you look at things like that, all my fears really seem rather stupid, but that proves nothing at all. I can laugh at the idea of living inside an illusion, even while being in one, can't I? If the whole crusade is an illusion, then who am I? Sorry, I'm giggling. My dog is, like, having a dream, and he keeps, like small barking, just like burp, burp, and like twitching on the ground, it's just very cute. If the whole crusade is an illusion, then who am I? You, Arushle, looks in your eyes confused. You, well, you know this is odd, but I can't picture you as an illusion. Anyone but you. Oh, but what if the thought is a delusion too? I gently touch Arushle's hand. I'm real. I swear it. She shivers, but doesn't jerk her hand back. She squeezes your palm with her hot, dry fingers. I believe you. You must be real. I don't want to imagine a world where that is not so. But, Arushale, let's go of your hand. I bet Maravok said the same thing to his demoness. I so desperately want to believe you're real, but he'd wanted to believe too. He also had his doubts, but he chose to wave them away because he wanted to love his demoness. Tell me, how am I any different from him? The difference is that he lived inside the illusion and he knew it, whereas you live in the real world and you know it. Do I? Arushale wrinkles her forehead. I think I do. When you talk about it, everything seems so simple. But when I'm alone again, all the doubts come back. They pile up more and more of them, and by morning, I'm back to not knowing what's real and what's not. Hold on, you just said you want to love me? Arushale's face turns bright red and she looks away. I didn't mean to. Well, she inhales and exhales loudly. I do care about you a lot. That's why I was so scared by the things I saw in Winter Sun. It's terrifying to think that love, I mean that such deep feelings, could be a delusion. You should spend more time with your friends and less time inside of your own head. Yes, you're right. The succubus gives you a shy smile. If I get lost in thoughts again, you'll help me return to reality, won't you? I will. But in the meantime, we've got nasty creatures to fight and kill, and, uh... Huh? Yeah. Um, Let's get yes, to that. I am never wrong. It's time to Mall start getting... Ears. Oh my god, we have so many level drains. I guess we should start fixing those problems first. We can death ward. You know what? might be just a good idea for us in this particular case. Death warding our main character, giving her all the buff spells, and just sending her out to go fight all the things. I like you. Actually, land up That's not. Okay. Let's just buff up our main character with death ward and a bunch of stuff, like key power, bark skin. Um, give her some mage armor. Give her a I'll bit of luck. Of bit of fun, sorry. Yes. Hmm? Why do I keep calling it a bit of luck? That's clearly not what it is. But anyways, um... 
here for some protection from evil. Is that everyone? Give her aid. Anything give you her blur. She's gonna have haste going in there, probably for sure. We gotta keep Ember back because she's gonna run in no Always matter what, and it's very annoying worst. to keep her alive. In fact, so Ember, give uh, that spell. Okay. My We're sitting at 41 armor class plus 21 to hit on all of our attacks, which is so many attacks. It's time to we have defensive on. We have everything on. She has keep our restoration. Oh, only from herself. Okay. Doubt Let's. Uh, I thought she was gonna be able to do it to anyone else. I'm like, damn, that's pretty good. I am never wrong. She does have quite a few negative levels on her own. I can just blast a few of those down with key power. Alright. Let's turn AI off on everyone. Put them all back here. Are we ready to move out? Haste nice on. Didn't Doesn't matter who. Okay. Uh, we should move. Now, we're just going to send our main character in. By herself. And we just got to keep Ember back. This will be oh, we're on turn based mode. We don't need that. Okay. Don't Only you back. go there. Everyone else stays back. Nope. Why is AI on? Everyone back. I only want to have to deal with Ember. Let's see if our main character can deal with all of them by herself. We killed one. <laughs> this is the most exciting fight. Keeping Ember from running in and dying while uh, our main character kills all the things off screen. Always exciting. And there's another one dead. Another one dead. I think we're healing faster than they're killing us at the moment. Combat, <laughs> there we go, combat's finished. So if we quickly take a I'm glance gone. back, there's just a pile of blood where we killed all of them. Perfect. Is there more up ahead? Maybe. Let's just, uh, Keep everyone Leon. back. She can go by herself because that is sort of where we're at in this Bodek hunting thing. Ah, a test of yep, my there's abilities. definitely more of them. Okay. Keep everyone back. Where is Ember? Okay, she's here. <sighs> if only Ember didn't want to run in and die. I don't know why her AI is set to like. Because if we stop, like, watch. She'll just go. She has no AI on. She'll just go and fight no matter what. She refuses to not do anything. And we're just going to kind of wait this out. Running Ember in lovely little circles so that she doesn't do anything dumb. How many people do we have left to kill, I wonder? 23 damage. It's like watching a text-based adventure. I used to play a bunch of those when I was younger. Oh, we took a bunch of damage there. There's a thing called the bereft one. That sounds like it's dangerous. Should we try and come back and fight it? Strike. Let's kill that one first. Okay, that one's dead. Fight you that one. Alright, there's the bereft one left. Should be dead by the time the rest of our group gets here, or pretty close anyways. And there we go. That's probably the end of combat. Everyone can come here. Combat's we finished. My way. I'm always ready. There's nothing to loot on his body? It's called the bereft one. It had a name. It was literally a named creature. Cold iron. I think we need that for some sort of ring based item. There's also something we missed down over here somewhere. Follow if you dare. Oh, just a bunch of random junk. Okay. This is fine. Or in this weird house. We got a bunch of experience for that. That's kind of nice. It feels weird when our group, my groups are so... They're on very disparate paths now. Like, 
we're off in the middle of the world wound in this group, and the other group is like sitting still in Dresden doing lich and like side quest I've stuff. Here. Is what there is that? More? A shirt. On the brink of death, whenever the wearer's health is below 50, each attack against the wearer has a chance to reflect dealt damage. They must pass a reflex saving throw DC 24 or suffer the attack. My skills are That's kind of nice. I mean, so is this though. It's a tough call. And now I think we can go back upstairs. So I think if we, I think there's two ways down into this dungeon area. I'm not sure if this is gonna be a lot of enemies up here. It is a place with possible energies or er, energies, energies and enemies. Yes, that's very true. Okay, let's save. I'll take care of it. I'm, I'm gonna my guess that we're probably gonna have to fight ah, things. I am never wrong. Almost assuredly. Nothing here though. I do what I must. Oh, the door? Anything? No. Going over this way? Nothing around? No more Bodex swarms? Run around to this side and just make sure. Her speed is just intensely fast. This is a nice little area. There's nothing in it. Not a single enemy to be seen, but a couple things to loot. One more place to check for enemies, and then I think we're done. We do it my athletics way. Athletics check to go down the well. That's where we went in, I believe. There's also an athletics check to go up and down this ledge. But there's nothing else here, so... I don't know what that would do or solve. Uh, let's not just loot everything. Because we don't need a light pick or an unmagical or unmasterwork glaive. More loot. Sure, we'll grab all that random junk. Uh, there's loot here by this tree skeleton with a sigh and a bunch of other junk. I'm off. Probably his prized possession, but it's not very good for us. There's also a little bit of loot inside the house in the form of this little jar over here. And that's going to be it for the zone, I think. Cool beans. I do what I must. We're going to quickly go run and do those athletics checks because they are worth experience, even if only like a couple hundred. Somebody bloop us up the cliff. Let's go. 432 experience, and then back down is another 432 experience. 800 experience, and we are done. Do we loot this? Right, that was just the glaive, I think. I'm gone. Yeah, okay. We're out of here. So now at least we have some tablets... I don't know what they're... Is there no zone transition here? Huh. Alright, fine. We'll go to this one. I know there's one somewhere around here. I thought for sure there'd be a zone transition over there, but there we wasn't. Do it my way. I know there's one up in this corner. Where are you, zone trend? There it is. Area exit. Okay. Oh, there was one down there, too. We missed. Fair enough. Nothing else to grab? Let's get out of here. That shirt that we got is really good, though, and I'm kind of tempted to put it on, but I think the robe is... It's hard to tell if the robe is better, but we have to be below 50 hit points, which is not great for us. We'd be in pretty dire straits if that was the case. There's a burnt-down shack over here. Let's head in that direction. Do we have any army things we can do? Yes. There's a level... Actually, which way can we go? Can we go this way and then down? Must be. And then over this way, maybe? Yeah, okay. Let's go beat up this level 7 army here. We'll save. There's a level 9 army as well. That one gives Claws of the Sacred Beast. This one gives energy points. It just has two units of... I'm not even sure what those are. Terry Demondans. They're actually kind of nasty. Holy crap. They have some uh, fire resistance as well, which is kind of annoying. This army might be really easy to blow up if we get to go first. With one sweet, sweet fireball of justice. Do we get to go first? We do. It's a lot of paladins. That poor army. Also, our general is clearly the best spellcaster in the world. She blew up like 700 troops. Or something like that. Some ridiculous thing. An attractive impulse. It's 
an item. Uh, the commander's unit was awestruck by their discovery. A small army of crusaders had taken a rest stop in the middle of the world wound and decided to arrange a tournament. The noble knights play full frolicking, however ended in a bloody massacre to which they were blithely oblivious as the warrior's eyes were entranced by the queen of the tournament, a magnificent nude succubus, who observed the crusaders with a gracious smile as they blew off each other's heads. A scarlet gemstone set in a delicate web of finest steel gleamed on her bosom. The fight was brief but very brutal. With deep sorrow, the commander's warriors eyed the corpses of their brothers in arms. They had fallen into a demon trap, uttering the words of Iamide, an officer ripped off the magnificent decoration from the succubus's bosom. bosom. Even after death, her cold, beautiful lips still wore a smile of contentment. And this is... Another relic, I'm guessing. At the time when the Aslanti Empire was still savoring its golden age of might and glory, the name Hecatrix was familiar to everyone in the city of Golden Gates. Hecatrix was the queen of courtesans and the most beautiful of women. Her heart-winning power was so great that even kings and queens could not harm her. The cruelest assassins would prostrate themselves at her feet like loyal hounds, impressed by her beauty and sensuality. The goddess Shailen and Callistria decided she should be their priestess and quarreled ferociously over her. Shrewd Hecatrix never was a chooser. She always wanted it all, so she praised each goddess in secret when her rival was not present. She was collecting the blessings of Shailen and Callistria in a beautiful gem until one night. The truth of her deception was revealed. Both goddesses were enraged by her betrayal, and while the kind Shailen forgave the traitorous, Callistria decided to destroy her. But in the course of an unbridled wine-fueled nocturnal orgy of debauchery, the queen of the courtesans was torn to pieces by a crowd-driven mad of lust. No one paid any heed to Hecatrix for 200 years until one day the sin-soaked soul of a succubus with a magnificent scarlet gemstone on her bosom awakened in the abyss. The gemstone was called the Attractive Impulse. The gem combined the passion and lust of the Queen of Courtesans with the blessings of two goddesses which together forged a dangerous and alluring relic. It's pretty cool actually. Let's take a quick look at our castle. We have an event, the arrival of Yakker Ankel. We're supposed to go there and talk about that I guess, but... We're not going to do that yet. And we did get a new relic. I guess, where is it? Soul Shear? Nope, we haven't done it yet. We really need to do more ruling stuff with this particular group. Anyways, let's uh, try to fight another demon army. Oh, we also have a level. What? Oh, yes. The best spell in the game. We are now an unstoppable killing machine. Nothing can stand against us. Ice Storm is, at least in the beta, it might, might have changed it. For all I know, they changed it and it's not nearly as good. But in the beta, Ice Storm was brokenly powerful. It, it's still pretty powerful. Uh, just wait. They're very slow. It did not die. It was still pretty powerful. I don't think it's as powerful as it once was. Or maybe we just got it later in the game. Because I remember fighting some early armies with Ice Storm. And it was just... It was just a slaughter. There was nothing that they could do. Let's try it. There's a level 10 army here. I don't know if we're going to make it. But we get a thing called Wicked Dope. And that just sounds cool. Oh, we can't make it. No, we're so close. Alright, let's go down to the Burnt Down Shack. That's where we're going to. I suppose... And we can't forget that we can just teleport back if we need to. We spotted the enemies. Okay, well, we have a random encounter. We'll turn on the AI and let them mow it all down. Hopefully it won't be too bad. I remember the last random encounter I had was just a brutal murder spree. Ash Giant? Just one Ash Giant? That seems like a woefully under-equipped ambushing army. Oh, there's two more. I mean, I... I should say, there's one more, and then there's a spider, which is practically nothing. What a weird encounter. Like, we had a random encounter before, which was ruthless. There was glabrazoos, and there was all sorts of nasty things. Then there was this. A handful of giant... Where's the zone transition? There it is. Like, a handful of giants. And, and spiders. A spider, I should say. What a joke. Anyways, we'll quickly get back to, or we'll get to the uh, burnt down shack, see what's there, and then that'll be the end of our video, I think.
I don't imagine it's going to be a large area. Although, I didn't also think that... Uh... Oh, is this just reagents? Yeah, there really was nothing there then. Befouled Barrows. I guess we'll go to the Befouled Barrows. I don't know what they have. Or we can go down this way. Let's just go exploring. We ran into an army. We could also teleport back home and deal with Yakker's thing. Might not be the worst idea. Let's More Ash Giants. Is there going to be another Ash Giant and a Spider? No, there's actually just more Ash Giants in general. Actually, many Ash Giants. Okay. Let's get a haste going. We're going to teleport back home anyways. And also AI on, please, everyone. Let's go. Our one pet's taking a little bit of a beating, but we're going to go back home after this anyways. We'll take a look at the barrows and then we'll go. If the barrows is just reagents, then that's easy enough. And if it's not, and it's an actual area, then we can do that. Although, I think we're going to be corrupted very soon. I'll get our first tier of corruption, which isn't the worst, but isn't something we want to deal with. So we'll just go with it. Oh, we're not. We went the other way, right? Uh, we can still go this way. Keep going. I want to see if it's a real zone, or if it's just like a... No, it's actually a barrows. Okay. Interesting. Um, if we rest, we might get corrupted. We'll try. I can't. Worst case scenario. Oh no, we're fine. We can go into the barrels. Okay, good. Let's go take a quick peek. Oh, it's a thing. Iridescent streaks appear in the bilious violet sky above the deserted lands. The streaks are not like an ordinary Galarian rainbow. They look more like oil dropped in water. The sweltering haze in the sky seems to waver along with the streaks time and again. One of the commander's party spots some movement out of the corner of their eye and reaches for their weapon only to immediately realize they were mistaken. The ground underfoot turns a muddy gray covered in a dense layer of ash expelled by geysers. Curious natural phenomena not uncommon in these parts. In the distance, barrows can be seen appearing only as vague piles of rocks in the haze. The wind whips clouds of ash into the faces of the commander and her party. Along with the ash, the wind ushers in a ragged cloud that shrouds the sky. A giant eye of cloud unblinkingly watches the commander and her party from above. One can only imagine how insignificant the creatures struggling across the land must seem for such a height. In a break in the clouds, the white of the eyes, the sky's eye pulses, ready to burst like a boil. The dark cloud of pupils grows blacker still. The commander decides to. Um, well, first we'll do perception. Study the shape of the clouds more closely. We have crazy perception. Arushale observes that in this wind, the ordinary storm clouds cannot coalesce into clear shapes. The air throbs with peril. This is no mere storm. What's brewing is something brought by the abyss and possible only in the wound. We could do a mobility check and make for the barrows, or we can do a knowledge check. Sure, let's try that. Knowledge 22. Nenio observes that in this wind, ordinary storm clouds cannot coalesce. That's the same thing that we have. Nenio recalls conversations with seasoned crusaders. If a giant eye appears in the sky, you must run and not look back. According to witnesses, what follows such an omen is so horrific that it can rob a newcomer to the world wound of their sanity. Let's make for the barrows, the only cover in the middle of the wastes. Living creatures can be beaten, but one cannot conquer a force of nature. The commander decides to run for cover. The party manages to reach the barrows before the storm swells up in full force. Something suddenly drops from the sky, landing with a splat at the commander's feet like an overripe fruit. It is white, about the size of a chestnut, and has a dark center. And the longer the commander stares at it, the more it seems like something is staring back. The fruit looks disturbingly like an eyeball. The whirlwind of ash stops the party from looking up to see what is happening in the sky. Perhaps a carrion bird was transporting it, or it's already rotting prize home. At least that's what all the companions are hoping as they cluster around the milky white eyeball. A second eyeball lands nearby with an unpleasant squelch, leaving only a bloody splash on the ash-covered ground. Two eyeballs cannot be a coincidence. The looming rocky ledges, which give the barrow the appearance of a hill, look like they could come crashing down on the party's heads at any moment. However, they do offer protection from the storm. The horrific hail misses the party almost entirely, and the eyeballs land around them in a wet cacophony. The land around the barrows looks more and more like a dumping ground than a burial ground. The storms have bleached skulls and bones, 
rusted armor and dented swords. This is a familiar sight. More surprising are the arms and legs of golems scattered around the waist, the once snarling faces of animals that now lack all resemblance to their living brethren. Things that look like horse carcasses but with broken mechanical legs. Everything is brown with rust and long forgotten. A battle was fought here once. Through the Veil of Ash, the party struggles to find an entrance to the Barrow. We can Knowledge World this, we can Knowledge Arcana this, we can Perception this, which we clearly have the best way of doing. Arushley taps on the rock to test its solidity, trying to find a weak point, a crevice or a door. Victory smiles on her. The next strike is answered with a ringing of iron. The ash-darkened piece of metal that covered the entrance crumbles under Arush Arushley's attack. The mouth of the Barrow is cool and smells of damp and dust. More of the ash lies underfoot, pressed into a glossy, slippery crust. It's clear that the barrow has been constructed above a cave system, the deliberately carved out corridors stretching off into the barrow's depths. Leave room for natural passageways, the wind wailing through stalactites in the dark carries a strange sound similar to a desperate cry, or a desperate human cry. Help me. Help me. The party strains to hear and decides to, lore nature that for sure. Only in 18 though, this is bad news. Oh, he did it though. The longer Lan listens, the more the voice changes. One moment it sounds like the desperate cry of a child, the next the piercing, ragged scream of a woman, the next a bird song. It cannot be ruled out that he is hearing only what he wants to hear. Let's go towards the voice. Alara cannot ignore the cries for help, and the party rushes towards the sound, frequently looking around for enemies or traps. The strange thing, the closer they get to the voice, the less distinct the pleas become, blurring into the grinding screech of a rusty mechanism. The only passage leading further into the barrow finishes in a dead end, a spacious cave, its walls decorated in frescoes that have almost entirely faded over time. Before the companions have a chance to decide whether to look for a door or turn back the cave floor, which seems solid with well-trodden ash vibrates and begins to ripple like water, one after another the commander's companions are sucked into a thick, ashy mass like they have sipped in quicksand. We can mobility check this one and easily do it. We should not try to athletics this at all under any circumstances. The party needs to assess the situation. The party understands that panicking is pointless. Assessing the situation and formulating a plan of action is much more useful. When they stop struggling, they notice that the quick ash seems to loosen its grip in turn. Below, they can hear strange noises like grinding metal. Could there be a mechanism drawing the quick ash downward? The exit from the cave is still too high up, and now the party have only one route out. Down. Let's just dive in. The quagmire's resistance vanishes as expected. The commander opens her eyes. Sensing that she's in free fall, through the gloom she sees a spear sticking out parallel to the ground, and she manages to grab hold of the wood and hang suspended from it. Suddenly, everything jolts into action. Dozens of daggers, saws, swords, and spears spring out from all sides, whistling through the air. But this is no enemy ambush. The weapons are being brandished by the pistons, clearly or loudly scraping gears of a giant mechanisms. Of a giant mechanism, sorry. The spear that saved the commander was so rusted in its piston that it no longer was able to move. The party has found itself in the heart of a giant metal flower growing out of the ashy quagmire covering the floor. The Uranog, built by the forges of the abyss, tries to close its petals, crushing, mashing, and cutting its victims to pieces, but years of lying dormant in the darkness have taken their toll. Its articulations move with a soul-shuddering screech and become easily jammed. The mummified bodies of unlucky crusaders can still be ha seen hanging, speared on rusty blades. If the commander wants to avoid their fate, she must... Try to escape by squeezing through the pedals. There is still enough of a gap between the pedals to squeeze through. Swinging to build up momentum, the commander jumps and successfully grabs onto the piston nearing the open nearest to the opening. Freedom is within reach, but the piston breaks off, and by some miracle, the commander manages to slow her fall by plunging the broken piece of metal between the moving parts of the pedal. The commander is almost out of time. Another few minutes, and it'll all be over. Realizing that a simple escape isn't possible, the commander decides to try jamming the Uranog's main mechanism in the heart of the flower. She looks for something sturdy and finds... Hmm... A tower sh shield? A staff over the shoulder of a dead monk. The body of a monk with a staff on his back looks utterly serene. This person knew what was coming and prepared for death. The Urnog's daggers pierced them from all sides, but in doing so they held him fast. His enchanted iron staff is untouched by rust, which is a promising sign. The commander tries to reach the staff, but to do this she needs to grab onto the monk's shoulders and hang from them. It's a risky maneuver, but the ancient mummy remains intact. Even to the touch, the monk's body is flexible and supple, like he's only recently dead. The commander seizes the staff and tosses it into the heart of the Uranog. The staff falls, striking perfectly in the vulnerable spot where the gears close together. With a furious screeching and scraping, the Uranog tries to grind up the staff. After a few minutes, the staff breaks, disappearing into the bowels of the mechanism. Well, crap. Let's try the hammer, then. 
The body of the paladin, clutching the warhammer in his hands, a bone hangs from one of the Urnog's hammers, pointing directly upward. The commander is lucky that this warrior chose to meet his death with weapon in hand. The commander drags his body towards her and grabs the hammer, but this, with the servant of light's grip, is surprisingly strong and refuses to relinquish the weapon. The bone arms are easily ripped from the skeleton's shoulders, still holding the hammer. The commander tosses the lot into the heart of the Uranog. The hammer falls, sparking off the gears and getting stuck between them. With a furious screeching and scraping, the Uranog tries to grind up the hammer, but it cannot. A tremor travels up the pedals, there's a deafening cracking sound, and the Uranog stills forever. After carefully extracting themselves from the clutches of the broken Uranog, the commander and her party find themselves up to their knees in Ashley's ashy sludge once more, but this time it only harmlessly squelches under their feet as they walk. A dark breach yawns before them, and the commander and the cry the commander heard at the entrance to the barrel rises up again. Help me! Since there's no other route, the commander decides to pray for the dead crusaders. The commander offers up a prayer, thanking the crusaders who helped their fellow soldiers even in death, and asking for forgiveness for not treating their bodies with the respect that they deserve. She feels the warmth suffuse her like the dead truly are with her, and are wishing the party good luck on its onward journey. After all the ordeals, the party finally goes up to the surface and emerges in a small chamber. Pipes protrude from numerous openings dotted all over the walls, and they connect to a small box adorned with a Baphomet symbol. The box cries out, producing high plaintive noises that, when carried through the pipes, begin to sound something like, Help me. The commander knows that this is just another demonic mechanism created to lure crusaders into the barrow. She smashes the box, scattering small bolts and gears across the room. Silence reigns, and there are no secrets left in this place now. And that's going to be where we end off. That was pretty cool. For now, I'll leave you guys here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.